I'm really excited for this video. Like, like I'm really, I've been waiting for this video for a long time. I, uh, cause look, I, I have a problem. I am, um, I really like gear. Like I like gear a lot. Like when a new streaming device comes out or a new camera or audio device or whatever, I get, I get pumped. Not just for like, little quality upgrades, but I get pumped about like new features that open up new doors to make new content. Like, I love it. But sometimes something special happens, something unexpected. Sometimes, sometimes a new feature is added and it's so different that nobody really knows what to do with it. Nobody knows how to use it. And for the most part, it gets kind of tossed aside. And those features are often the ones that uh, that change the game because they're so different. It just takes one person seeing its potential and, and using it in a way that nobody expected and, and suddenly everybody jumps on board and it becomes the new norm. But sometimes you can't really see the potential of those features until you combine them with another feature of another device that nobody's using. And then you combine those two features with another weird feature of another device and suddenly you have this whole new thing that nobody else has, even though everybody has all those things, but you're, you're able to use it in a way that nobody's seen before. And those are the gear moments that I live for. Those, those are the most exciting moments. And I've got one of those for you today. Because see, there's a problem I've been wanting to solve for myself for a while. I see a lot of Twitch streamers take either full games or clips or highlight reels and rip them off of Twitch and throw them on YouTube. And sometimes they do really well. And usually when they do really well, it's only because you are a large streamer and you have a million people watching your streams. And so when you post it on YouTube, the highlights, everybody's gonna wanna see it. But there are so many issues with the content when you do that. One, if you're playing any music in the background at all, you forget to turn it off, there's gonna be some copyright issues and hello demonetize button. Two, Twitch stores thousands or maybe millions of hours of VODs. And in order to hold that kind of storage space, I mean, you gotta compress those files to, I mean, microscopic levels. And you can tell when you watch VODs, especially if you've ever downloaded your own VOD off of Twitch, you can just see it's it's not, <laughs> it's not high quality stuff. And as someone who takes a lot of pride in quality, that's always really irked me. Then there's also the factor of convenience. If I ever wanna use a couple 15 second moments from my stream in original YouTube content, I wanna, I wanna fit them in some original videos, I don't wanna have to download an eight hour VOD and sift through it to find that 15 seconds. None of these things are practical when it comes to making high quality YouTube content. And so I managed to put together the right combination of different devices and solve every single one of these. I can record the gameplay footage in up to 4K and the camera footage in 1080p, even if the camera is just a tiny little square on the side of the screen, I can record them both in full quality, completely separate, so I have full control to edit them. And by pushing a single button, I can record all those things after they already happened. I can record the last 15 seconds or I can record the last half hour if I want to and really anywhere in between. So let's do this. Let's go over exactly which devices I use, how they work and how you can apply it to you know, your own content just in case you don't want to go completely full um, full moron like I did and go completely overboard and you just want to apply a couple pieces, well, you can apply these tools to fit uh, your content. Let's go. By the way, just a reminder, I do stream on Twitch every Monday, Wednesday, Friday. If you have any other questions for me, or want to come and hang out and see how this actually works. Uh, link in the description below. Feel free to come and follow me there. Also, uh, if you enjoyed this video, you found this useful or helpful or just, I don't know, entertaining. Be sure to hit the like button on the video and uh, subscribe to the channel. Maybe ring the bell to know when I post these because I post videos twice a week. Cool. Let's get started on the most important thing. The end goal. The reason I'm doing all of this. I've been planning on starting back up my personal YouTube channel for a long time. Again, link to that in the description below. Hasn't launched yet. Maybe by the time you watch it, it has. Anyway, I've never been the person to justify buying gear unless I have a specific need or a specific reason for it. Just a lot of times, a lot of gear just 
feels like a, a big waste of money. But if you look closely at the difference between Twitch streamers and their YouTube videos versus actual gameplay YouTubers, there is, there's a pretty significant difference. The big one being gameplay YouTubers don't record their videos while they're live. They don't rip their streams. This gives a couple important advantages. One, uh, they're not ripping down VODs. And you guys, like, I know you watch YouTubers who, who rip their VODs and post them, and you've seen, you've seen the VOD quality. You know what I'm talking about. You know that zoom in on the camera and like your face is four pixels? We've all been there. I don't want that. I don't want to deal with that. I don't want you to deal with that. The second advantage is your content is designed for YouTube. Live streaming is totally different. There are so many things you add to a stream when it's live and interactive. Things like your alerts, things like your overlays, things that add an element of, of interaction between you and your followers that just, it, it isn't there for someone watching a YouTube video. High quality, successful gaming content on YouTube is clean. And this setup allows me to achieve both of those things. So let's go over exactly the setup and exactly how it works. First things first, I run a two PC streaming setup. And while the gaming PC is gaming and the streaming PC is streaming, they're also both doing separate tasks in the background for me to do this. They're both doing a little extra recording for me while the stream is going on. They both have Elgato capture cards built into them. And this, this video is not sponsored by Elgato, by the way, but Elgato has uh, one of those tiny little features that I've never actually seen anybody use um, but I do. Let's start with the streaming PC. The streaming PC has Elgato's newest 4K60 Pro Mark II capture card built into it. And specifically that capture card because, again, it has a very important feature built into it, and I'll get into that in a sec. This capture card allows me to game in 1440p, 144 hertz. That's not the feature. Gaming PC. The gaming PC also has a capture card built into it. For this one, I use the HD60 Pro. I've also put in my streaming PC a quad capture card. It's basically four capture cards built into one. That way I can connect multiple cameras and all the, the, fun, the fun things for the live stream that I want. Now that's the important capture equipment that I've got in these PCs. Let's first explain how I capture the camera at full 1080p, no matter the resolution of the camera on my stream at any given moment. The main camera that I use on stream, I have plugged into the HD60 Pro that I mentioned in that gaming PC. And then it goes out of the output of that HD60 Pro into the quad capture on the streaming PC. So basically while my camera angle starts with the camera and ends in the quad capture card in the streaming PC, it first passes through that capture card on the gaming PC. Doing this allows me to run Elgato's Game Capture HD software on my gaming PC in the background and be recording my camera at full resolution before it ever goes into OBS on my streaming PC and I crop it and resize it and do all the adjustments. Also, by the way, I do recommend turning off the preview window in this software uh, so that way your gaming PC doesn't uh, cry when trying to game and capture at the same time. As for recording the gameplay footage in 1440p, remember when I mentioned that 4K 60 Mark II and why it was so important? It has a special feature that allows the card to be utilized in multiple softwares at the same time. So while OBS is using that capture card footage and downscaling it to 1080p for my stream, I also have Elgato's 4K capture utility software open capturing the footage in 1440p. They're doing it, uh, they're doing it at the same time. By the way, uh, important note here on this subject, I am still having some issues with the card that I mentioned in a prior video. There's a tiny screen glitch that happens once or twice a stream, uh, as well as uh, some weird resolution issues that happen, oh, only once every couple weeks now. And I know uh, there are some other streamers that are also having similar issues. I know Elgato is, is working on it, and the reason I still use the card anyways is because the benefits to me outweigh these issues, but if I'm gonna talk about this card, I feel like it's important that um, you know these things. But if you are looking into buying this card, it is important that you know that these issues are currently here. Now, at this point, you're probably thinking, okay, you're recording both of these sources at full resolution. Harris, aren't you having issues with storage capacities and massive files? Well, I would say to that, why don't you just wait for a moment because this is exactly why I picked these cards. Both of these softwares, both Game Capture HD and 4K Capture Utility have a feature in them called 
flashback recording. And what this means is they are continuously recording all the time, but if you don't use that footage, it automatically deletes it. But if something amazing happens, I can hit a flashback recording button and it'll save that prior footage that it's recorded. I can record as short as the previous 15 seconds, or I can record as long as the previous 30 minutes, as well as lots of intervals in between. And what I've done is I've hooked up a stream deck to each of these PCs, and on each of them, I have a 15 second flashback button, a 30 second flashback button, a minute, a five minute, and a 30 minute flashback recording. And I can use any one of those lengths to record both of those capture cards retroactively. So a funny quip happens with my teammates. I reach forward and hit both 15 second flashback recording buttons on each PC and it captures my camera and my gameplay. If I have just an insane game of PUBG or Apex Legends or whatever, I can hit the 30 minute button and I can go back and record the entire game, both my camera and my full resolution gameplay. So as I'm going back through with this footage, I have complete control to zoom in on my face, to move my camera around the screen if I feel like it, any and all of these things I have complete control over. Okay, so now that we've addressed how to get the footage, let's talk about how to get your microphone, your teammates, and your gameplay while cutting out the music from both of these. And by the way, you can even do this audio trick on a one PC setup. You don't need two PCs for this part. If you've watched any of my videos before, you know I'm a huge fan of the GoXLR. And it's not just about top-notch audio quality, which by the way, it has very good audio quality. It's about the control and the opportunities that you have with the uh, the intuitive software and the way it works. See, the GoXLR has multiple distinct outputs that it uses to send your mix back to the PC. And while one of them is your chat mic, which is supposed to be just your mic to send to your teammates, the other two are the line out, which is the 3.5 millimeter jack that I usually send to my streaming PC, as well as the broadcast mix, which goes over the USB cable, which connects to your gaming PC. Or if you're on a single PC setup, you can connect both of these to the same PC. All you have to do is take the output of these two that you're not sending to your stream and configure your audio for your YouTube videos. Let's talk about how you do that. I use the line out to go to my streaming PC, which means I'm gonna be using the broadcast stream mix for my YouTube recording. In the GoXLR, you open up the routing table, which is essentially the table where you say, hey, here are all your sound sources, where do you wanna send them? All you have to do in here is find the music column and make sure you check the box that lines up with line out, so it's sending to OBS, and uncheck the box that lines up with broadcast stream mix to go to your YouTube mix. Then in that capture software that you're using, go to your audio input and choose broadcast stream mix. So now in my flashback recordings of my camera, I have my mic, my chat, my gameplay, but I don't have copyrighted music. So the demonetized badge can suck it. And look, this whole setup doesn't have to be used for exactly what I'm setting it up for. The whole purpose of this video is to explain to you some of these tools that you might not realize exist so you can mold them and change them into your content and what you need to accomplish. There are a lot of tools out there for content creators tools that will help you take your content to the next level and, and grow your brand and grow your following. You know, don't be afraid to try new things and explore, experiment, break your setup. Not the not the devices, just like, you know, your, your setup. Break it, because whenever you break it, you end up putting it back together even better than it was before. Anyway, guys, I hope uh, you followed along. I hope you got it. I hope this was helpful and interesting. And uh, if you have any ideas, anything that you think I missed that would be useful for something like this, leave it in the comments below. Once again, I do stream every Monday, Wednesday, Friday on Twitch, uh, link in the description. And if you're looking for like-minded individuals to talk about these ideas with, we have a whole discord of like 30,000 people right now who are all looking to improve their content. So make sure you join the discord again, link in the description below. And guys, as always, Happy streaming. Oh shoot! <laughs> you got him, dude. Oh my gosh! That was amazing!